General Motors took the unusual step Friday of appealing directly to employees in hopes of ending a month-long strike. In a letter, GM laid out the terms of its latest offer in a move that circumvents the United Auto Workers Union's leadership pointing to GM's frustration at a lack of progress on ending a conflict that has already cost the company more than $1 billion. GM also urged the union to agree to around-the-clock negotiations. In a response, the UAW fired back, releasing a video featuring its lead negotiator. I want to ensure you, despite that letter, your bargaining team has been here around the clock working to get you the contract that you deserve. The company's strategy of releasing half-truths does nothing to reach a final settlement for you and your families. The walkout so far has been the longest for GM in 50 years, and for workers on the picket line, like Ken Washington, it's coming at a great financial cost. A lot, a lot of people are hurting, a lot of families are hurting, and the longer we're out, it's, it's like a no-win situation for everybody. The automaker said its latest offer includes increased compensation through wages while preserving health care benefits without boosting costs workers have to pay. While a source told Reuters that GM beefed up the amount it plans to invest in the U.S. to about $9 billion, its previous offer was $7 billion. More bad news for the crumbling auto market as guess who's coming in to join the picket lines? None other than President Joe Biden. Now to the historic auto workers strike expanding to more locations as President Biden accepts the UAW's invitation saying he'll join striking workers on the picket lines. ABC's Faith Abube is in Wayne, Michigan with the latest on the president's support and the ongoing negotiations. Faith, good morning. Good morning to you. With the fallout from the strike could be devastating. Some analysts already saying consumers who need car repairs at dealerships and service centers could start feeling the impact in just a matter of weeks. We are the union. We are the union. This morning, the United Auto Workers back on the picket lines as President Biden prepares to join the striking workers in solidarity next week. Friday, the union expanding their targeted strike, asking workers at 38 GM and Stellantis parts distribution facilities in 20 states from California to Florida to walk off the job after a stalemate with the two automakers. It's going to not only affect the company and all of us workers that are going to be on $500 a week, but it's also going to affect the consumer. The customers will be waiting for car parts to get their cars fixed and they're going to be sitting. In a statement, Stellantis saying it'll continue to bargain in good faith and that the company the company presented a competitive offer, but the union never responded. Ford notably not affected by the strike expansion. UAW President Sean Fain saying the automaker made some progress in critical areas like cost of living increases, profit sharing, and job security during layoffs. We do want to recognize that Ford is showing that they're serious about reaching a deal. Hmm. Do you guys think that having the president show up will change anything? I mean, serious question here. Here's what I want you guys to realize, all right? Why are these strikes even happening? Any guesses? Because workers are saying that they can't afford the cost of living. They want to have secure jobs. They're afraid of layoffs, much of which has been directly connected to rising inflation. You see where I'm getting at here? Y'all remember when we were told that inflation was transitory, right? Yeah. And remind me again as to who printed trillions of dollars that basically crushed the dollar's worth? I mean, if all of this was planned from the beginning and he solves the crisis, then he's going to end up as a hero of this story, right? Although, of course, if you ask me, it's kind of like somebody turning off the lights and then coming running in with a candle. If anybody understood how I compared both of these scenarios, make sure to smash the like button for the video. This is one of the sharpest communities out here on YouTube, so I know that a lot of you guys already understood it before I even asked. And if you're not a part of this community yet, please consider subscribing to the channel and also hitting that notification bell. That way you never miss out on any of my future updates. Appreciate the support, you guys. So getting back on topic, and since I really just want to be frank with you guys, this looks a whole lot like a game plan from day one, one from the administration. What's the plan? Well, step one, create a problem. Step two, make it worse. Step three, solve it and then use it as a talking point to get even more votes. You see where I'm going with this? And if you told them that things were getting better before they came around, all they would tell you are half truths and whole lies. I mean, remember when they told us back in July last year? President Biden, who grew up in a family where the price of gas was a kitchen table issue, has elevated easing price pressures as his top economic priority. 
And we economists think of this in terms of inflation, inflationary expectations, interest rate changes, a vast array of complicated concepts and measurements. But the fact is that it comes down to affordability and the need among American households for a bit of breathing room in making ends meet. Therefore, we're very happy to report the current drop in the price of gas down 50 cents per gallon over the past 34 days is one of the fastest decline in retail gas prices in a decade. At current prices, the average American driver will spend about $25 per month less on gasoline than they would have if prices had stayed at their June peak. Economy-wide, that means American drivers are saving around $190 million each day from lower gas prices. And since gasoline prices affect the prices of other goods and services through transportation costs, food is a good example, both households that drive and households that don't yield some benefit from lower gasoline prices. Now, if I'm not mistaken, inflation was at, what, 9% back then? But hey, gas has gone down historically quicker than before. They also argued that gas prices were high when Trump was around, although a quick Google check would disprove that in like a minute. Around five seconds if I was the one searching for the numbers, but this is what they do. They create fire after fire, and then they proceed to try and extinguish it because they know for a fact that they're gonna need some more help in 2024, mainly with your votes, of course. But still, we're not gonna invest a cent in to making gas prices cheap here at home. Nah, they're gonna put in policies that would hold off drilling, they're gonna cut off pipelines, they're gonna bleed our strategic petroleum reserves dry, and they're gonna take our tax money, money that you and I thought would actually help us. They're gonna send that money to a different country. Which country, you might ask? Well, any other country other than the United States. I mean, this is just insanity at its finest, folks. Now, what's gonna become of this? Well, you're bound to see dealerships file for bankruptcy and ultimately end up closing their doors for good. We're already seeing it because other unions will hear this and they're gonna see this push from the federal government and they're going to think, hey, we need better pay too. Now, the question is, where is it going to come from? Who's going to pay for these increases? Consumers are tapping out as it is, although I'm pretty sure that it's going to be a few people who's going to be buying cars as it is. But but these people fail to realize is that the car making this entire auto market is going to go back to normal. Granted, it's going to take some time. And with the trajectory that we're on, it's going to take a bit to get there. But here's a different take on this entire strike thing, though. And, and I want to hear what you guys think about this, right? So what if, and, and again, this is mainly based on my opinion, right? But what if automakers were also in on these strikes? Like not that unions are communicating with them to, to do this, but think about it. Who stands to make a ton of money on the parts that are going to be a part of the shortages? Now I'm using the term shortages pretty loosely here because who knows if the inventory is actually short right now. So these strikes, which I believe will happen even more often come 2024, will only cause these prices of parts and cars to shoot up. And at the end of it, it's the consumers who end up paying for all of these problems. But what are your thoughts on this? Will the president end up being the man who makes this all right and kind of put his cape on and save the day? Or is this yet another talking point that he's going to be using for next year? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Before I go, guys, I just want to thank you so much for your support. Thank you for dropping likes on the video. Thank you for subscribing. And I'll see you guys on the next one.